If you, if you don't want to be in the recording, keep your picture off and don't say anything. All right, how's that? <laughs> but I officially asked you all if you are okay and you, you no, one, no one has uh, uh, had an issue. Great, so in the uh, chat, you'll see uh, the link posted to our notes and agenda. We're just gonna work from this document. If you could all join me there, please. Um, uh, you will find, um, oh, thank you. Thank you to the anonymous who missed that. Um, navigate down to the agenda, we have 90 minutes. So welcome. Uh, this, uh, I, I, am, I am your administrative support for the COPTAS co-chairs. Um, your co-chairs are Helen Glaves, Hanson, Kirsten Leonard, uh, Aaron Robinson, and Leslie Wyborn. Uh, and thank you all for coming. If you've not yet signed in, uh, please do so. Uh, I'm putting a big yellow uh, highlight on the uh, link to signing in. Uh, and uh, the uh, ad agenda overview, I think you all can just quick take a look, but I'll say very uh, briefly that we have three workshops planned, one of them completed, and we'll have a, a, a update on that one by Danny Kincaid. Uh, we'll also, um, Oh, oh, there's a there's a spreadsheet below for your name. If you if you could please go to the link, that would be great. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and uh, the second item on the agenda is uh, efforts that are happening around improving citations and journals. And there's a number of items. Um, if you have an effort that we did not include in this list. You're welcome to add, uh, uh, add it to the agenda here and we'll call on you. Um, I will put that in yellow, add your effort. And as long as we have time, we will go ahead and cover it. So there we go, add your effort here. Um, does anyone have a question as to adding your effort to the agenda? I think, I think with the yellow highlight, that's helpful. So Shelley, can I be a pest? Could you put the link in the chat again? Because I dropped in after I think you put the link in the chat. Yep, thank no you. Problem. I'm sure you weren't the only one. Thanks, Helen. Helen's one of our co-chairs. Hello, Helen. Um, and the last thing we'll cover are some um, administrative things that are happening, um, including uh, asking you uh, if you have any ideas for future workshops. Okay, I think I saved a little time on the welcome and agenda. Do any of the co-chairs want to say hello? Yeah, hi, everybody. Glad to see you. It's great to uh, have another session on uh, the, the Coptis issues and see a lot of people. And I hope uh, that everybody is bringing in your colleagues who would be interested in this. Thanks, Kirsten. And also, this is Brooks. Hello. Also, I'm really excited. There is so much energy and momentum and things going on all across the entire data publishing repository funding landscape that it's an um, exciting time. I'm sure we won't get all of it um, summarized, put together today, um, but um, looking forward to the next several months of additional developments. Helen running the EGU meeting, so we won't make her talk. Um, is our Please don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm running on fumes at the end of today, believe you me. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> and Helen, if you have to step away, we really do understand. <laughs> it's quite yeah, okay. I won't be here till the end because I, I do indeed have to step away in about an hour. All right, very good. Um, I Is Aaron Robinson on by chance? Did anybody? I haven't. Not hey, Shelly. I'm on. Hello. Yep. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm an outgoing co-chair of Coptis and happy to be here and to see the interest and um, sounds like an exciting agenda. Great. Good to see you. Um, and then Leslie Wyborn is, of course, sleeping right now. So she's in Australia and we are recording for her. Again, if anybody doesn't want to be recorded, please turn off your camera and don't say anything. <laughs> There we are. I hope there's no one who, who doesn't want that, but in case you do. Great. Um, one more time, putting in the notes and agenda. If you haven't signed in, please do so. 
Um, and we're gonna move on to the workshops. You should have all, uh, or at least folks that are on our email list, you should have received uh, information about workshops we're setting up in 2021. You, the three of them are here. Um, the first one's taken place and I'll let Danny Kincaid give us an update in just a moment. Um, the other two, you can sign up on that website. Uh, the other two focus on software citation guidance coming out of Force 11, which should be interesting to most of you, as well as a really valuable rubric for what to preserve when it comes to models and model data. Um, this, is, uh, this is in its first iteration. Feedback is incredibly welcome, but it's uh, already valuable guidance for uh, editors and authors on what to do for publication. Um, and we highly recommend that you take a look at that for considering in your, um, in, as you're trying to figure things out. Okay, Danny, would you like to tell us about the first workshop? Sure. Let me see if I can come online here. Um, I don't know how much I didn't get to, since I'm dropping in, I'm kind of crashing your session. I didn't get, to, um, how much time would you like me to just kind of give everybody an overview of it. Um, we're running ahead. So, I mean, if you want to take about five minutes, that'd be great. Okay, fantastic. So um, for those of uh, the participants who haven't been familiar with this um, repository journal workflow, it was an effort that came out of the US, um, originally started in the US Council for Data Facilities. Um, that was sort of an, an earth group in the US who uh, was a group of repositories um, it's still there. It's still there. It wasn't. What's that? It's still there. It still exists. <laughs> yes. Yes. So at the time, it was um, it was it, it it was serving as a platform for the repositories to talk about this challenge that we've been experiencing with the publication um, workflow, the scholarly publication, and and a lot of domain repositories have become challenged to fit into this this. Uh, scholarly publication workflow as it relates to the data that are necessary to um, for the review process and also to just um, basically demonstrate veracity of these findings. Um, so, so the idea came around that um, publishers and repositories have very few um, communication um, opportunities. Uh, so the workflows are a bit of a black box. We came up with the idea of um, trying to come up with a common model that we can all use as a reference point to talk about the touch points between repositories and the journal publication process and describe some of the frictions that are there, um, some of the bottlenecks that are happening on the domain repository side and, and try and work through some of those challenges. So we've, we've um, sort of socialized this both at ESIP, um, RDA, AGU, a lot of different platforms. Coptis has been very, um, forthcoming and helpful in, in this endeavor. Um, the webinar series workshop took place on oh, April 12th. Geez, it feels like it was uh, long ago now. And I will put the, um, I will put the workshop agenda in the notes. Um, prior to this, we had been focusing on a, a workflow model that was very inclusive um, it, it was following on to some work that had happened in RDA already and a, a data publication workflow working group. That work was not quite granular enough to describe the interactions that we wanted to address between repositories and publishers. Um, so we went and sort of started getting our own practical data workflow model um, together. And we found that we really need to, to zoom in um, on the publisher side. And so that was really the impetus for this workshop um, and the agenda that I just put in there um, is the, the workshop agenda that had already gone off. Um, it, was a, it was really well attended, it was fantastic. We came out of that with, a, um, if you scroll down to the end of those notes, we came out with a series of recommendations that are really not onerous um, to either repositories or publishers, uh, or at least the preliminary feedback that we've gotten has been very favorable. Um, and it, it, if you do scroll down to page four, I don't know if I can really um, uh, share screen right now, and I don't know that it's, it's worth that, but the, uh, the recommendations on the, on the journal side are really um, 
facilitating the author connection um, to the repository, helping guide the, the author through that, um, um, providing the um, journal needs to the repository, um, getting the, oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shelley. Um, so here you can see, thank you. Here you can see the recommendations that we came up with um, and pushed out basically to repositories and journals for review during this workshop. Um, they, were, they were received very favorably. Um, we asked for a little bit, if we were missing anything, we asked for a little bit of guidance there. Um, we got a little bit of feedback, draft recommendations for um, journals, as I was saying, were really just helping that facilitate that connection, providing some, some details um, back to the repository. And then on the repository side, really boiling down to allowing reviewers access to, um, to the data that's being curated in real time um, as needed for that review process. So uh, not too onerous, although we do recognize that some repositories will be challenged by this, but for the most part, providing access on the repository side, whether that be a share link or some other mechanism to the reviewers to allow them access to that data. Um, there was a lot of conversation around the utility of DOIs or maybe reserved DOIs. Um, and, and so this is what we came up with out of, the, out of the workshop. And we'd like to sort of promote this a little more and get feedback um, on these recommendations and then work toward implementation. Um, and Shelly, I'll allow you to, you know, feel free to provide any missing detail there. I, I think I'd only add one item. Um, uh, the uh, journals that have um, broad discipline data um, are challenged with uh, being specific as to which domain repositories and giving specific repository guidance. So we recognize that they'll need help with that. Um, and even though it says in this first one, help others select the appropriate domain institutional general repository, this is actually really hard. So um, there'll be more work that's needed, uh, especially in conjunction with the repository community. Um, if we're lucky, RDA might step into this ring based on some talks last week, but um, I'm not sure. Great, thank you. Um, I think that's I think that covers pretty much pretty much the workshop in a nutshell. Um, at the top of that notes document, you'll have uh, um, all of the more detail on the on the culminating work before this workshop and and some of the context as well. A little more detail on that. So I invite everybody to go dig into the notes. Thanks, Shelley. Sure. Does, if anyone wants to participate in conversations going forward and you, you've not been included on, um, you, this is their first time hearing about it. Um, if you could, Danny, what should they do? Should they just put something in the notes here? I think that'd be great. Sure. Okay. All right, let's, let me make a quick spot in the notes. Um, um, do we all have access? Because I'm happy to do that and let you steer the rest of your session. Uh, yeah. Oh, please do. Yes, you you have access. You should have edit capability, um, and great. make it perhaps make a spot. That's really obvious. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks, Shelley. Thank you. Um, I, we do we do not have speakers for the upcoming sessions, uh, but there is description of what those are on that webinars. Does anybody have questions on? these workshops and does anybody have suggestions for new workshops that you could possibly say out loud or put uh, into the document? There's a section at the bottom. Okay, if anybody's excited about these workshops, feel free to put a reaction up. Thanks, Kirsten. <laughs> Kirsten and Kirsten, thank you. I appreciate that. Those are the two that I see. Okay, great. And Kirsten has a question, go ahead.
No, so I, I don't have a question. I just didn't manage to to control my reaction <laughs> button. Sorry, I might have a question later on, but not at the moment. <laughs> I love it. You are overreacting. I, I really, I feel like that you just made my day. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, we're going to move you on. You wanted me to talk about that geochemistry workshop later, right? Not now. Actually, so it is right second. now. That is our next topic. So, um, yeah. Kirsten, if you can take about five minutes to tell everybody what's going on. I probably don't even need that long, but uh, so uh, actually kind of Thinking back, um, Coptis um, emerged from a smaller group, a discipline, discipline specific uh, group for these issues of data publishing best practices standards that was called the Editors Roundtable, uh, focusing on geochemical, petrological, mineralogical data, and, and so on. And um, some progress has been made in geochemistry uh, following the uh, sort of broader advances in data citation, in um, open access to data and fair data and so on. Uh, but Leslie Wyburn, who as you heard is probably asleep right now, um, and, and I who are both geochemists um, feel that we do need uh, to get back to this topic because of um, the need to be more specific in, um, in data, in establishing um, actual data standards in meaning uh, real schemas, vocabularies and so on uh, for data exchange and for capturing this type of all the relevant type of information in a consistent manner in publications. So we proposed uh, last year a workshop um, to the Geochemical Society uh, which has been approved and will be sponsored by the Geochemical Society. It's called Standards for the Publication of Geochemical Data, uh, starting the conversation. And while we initially hoped to have the workshop in sort of the January, February 2021 timeframe, um, we all know things have been difficult to keep up with. And so we're now heading towards this summer, I think. Um, I think what, what to me is relevant is considering this maybe as a template for further disciplinary uh, efforts, because we know that within the FAIR acronyms, the I and the R are very often very domain specific, data type specific, and we're missing overall guidelines uh, that the repositories can implement. We're missing governance of these domain specific standards. Uh, so uh, I hope that you know, some of these insights will be gained for geochemistry in this workshop. I encourage you uh, to contact me if you wanna participate in the organization or uh, in the actual workshop. We wanna focus to some degree on um, societies that have to do with mineralogical geochemical data, including you know, the Mineralogical Society of America, European Association of Geochemists, and so on. Uh, in this um, context, I also wanted to mention that we're running a session on Friday here at the EGU, uh, SE 3.9, um, that uh, looks at data pipelines and best practices for geochemical data, uh, followed by a town hall, or it's not a town hall, sorry, it's a splinter um, meeting, SPM3 on uh, building global networks for geochemical data. So just again, you know, few of you may be uh, interested in geochemistry, but I think it's an important um, move to, um, bring communities, different disciplinary communities on the same pathway, on the same track. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Um, really exciting to see the focus um, in the geochemical uh, data and definitely an example for how we can all move forward. Thank you. Um, our next topic is uh, the work that AGU is doing on the journal specific guidance. I will admit bias here. Um, uh, and Chris Erdman, who's new to AGU's data leadership team is going to share that with you. 
Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. Um, so let me bring up my slides here um, quick and uh, um, go into presentation mode here. So yeah, as, as uh, Shelly said, uh, I just recently joined um, the AGU uh, data leadership team. Um, so I just joined um, her and Brooks and uh, trying to keep up with them. <laughs> this is fast and furious work. Um, but yeah, so we've started um, this um, two-year pilot grant uh, with the NSF um, and other partners, as you can see. So Dryad, Chorus, ESIP, Wiley, um, working on uh, capturing data citations, uh, um, also just uh, more broadly, but also um, NSF specifically, and then um, continuing our work on, on guidance on um, best practices for um, our you know, researchers uh, on, in data citation, software citation. Um, and I included a link to these slides. Um, there's a PROW announcement that you can read up on um, if you wanted to learn more about this grant. But in the meantime, um, we're making uh, significant progress in um, adding more data sharing guidance. Um, and the feedback we're already receiving from our editors and, and uh, authors is that it's been helpful. It's been streamlining um, the process so we have less questions or we have more specific questions. Um, so just we've been capturing that, that input. Um, but in the process, it's been very rewarding to work with the editors and, and you know, some of our authors in developing um, the data sharing guidance um, that we're expanding out to other journals, you know, the ones you just saw. Um, and we usually focus on um, the discipline specific needs um, that you heard about earlier, our repository recommendations, they vary um, between the journals. Uh, language can vary too, um, as far as what they stress and uh, more uh, than, than maybe other um, uh, journals do, or just some, you know, other slight variations in how they word things. And then um, citation examples, 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 examples is something we often hear from them um, that, that we need more of. And then uh, resources also shift as far as the, the, the you know, sub-discipline that we're working with. And modeling as well, it's been something uh, where we've had um, some significant conversations uh, um, with, with our editors. And so, um, moving forward, we actually have um, these, uh, we, we, we're going to publish hopefully soon the ones on the left, you see oceans to space weather, um, just some additional conversations that we need to have with, with those groups. And, you know, just to call out to um, Peter Fox's great work, still inf influencing the work we're doing here. The work he did with earth uh, and space science guidance has been very helpful um, in our work. And then um, uh, these upcoming editor meetings are coming up to also um, work through the data sharing guidance. So we're making good progress. Um, and in the, the process, we've also created this um, data help um, at AGU email. Um, we're also working with the, you know, of course, ESIP and, and EGU on the data help desk. We did that last, uh, last week. Um, but um, yeah, this, this email address has been great as far as receiving all the different um, questions related to uh, data and software sharing guidance. And um, I, I've actually uh, heard from a number of people that would be interested to hear what kind of questions are you receiving uh, um, from, from the authors. Uh, and uh, as far as next steps go, um, we're go looking out to the future after uh, we get out this initial guidance of how we can make it um, more collaborative um, version and cite it, um, um, you know, sort of practice what we preach uh, and start citing our guidance um, as well. And just, you know, I think just uh, having a more iterative process and welcoming the community into uh, helping with our guidance. So um, yeah, that was quick. Um, if you have any questions, uh, um, you know where to find us. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks, Shelly. And, and probably just to, to reiterate what Kyle said, I mean, this, this guidance isn't special for AGU and our intention is to be as, as open and transparent and with opportunity for comments and um, certainly happy to, um, you know, brief uh, going forward here at COPDES and invite other collaborators, you know, from this community.
Thank you, Chris. Um, all right. I think Hans has a question. Oh, thank you. I wasn't watching. Hans, yeah. Hello. Yes, I do. Hello, uh, Hello, Chris. Uh, one question, do those recommendations also include uh, the question of uh, data formats, et cetera, just as uh, Kirsten has just uh, shown about geochemistry? Not, not yet, not yet. Kirsten's not done yet, so we can't possibly include it. <laughs> um, I, I think it's probably fair to say that across the domains, um, the the you know, it's the repository that, that is helping with those formats and that guidance. So Kirsten's work in geochemistry is really important and will of course um, be interested in, in that and incorporating it, um, promoting that work. Kirsten, do you wanna speak more about that? Well, I just wanted to add, I mean, what we have noticed in EarthChem um, over the last couple of years is actually a much more proactive role of the community that they want to play in establishing standards. So we've we've just released a feature uh, called communities where um, you know different uh, subdomains, so to say, with within uh, our geochemical community um, can work with us on building you know data templates and best practices that fulfill their needs while mapping to certain higher level standards that we would like to impose. So it's an interesting process that is more, more and more community driven rather than the repository saying, we want this from you. <laughs> you know, so I, I think it would be an interesting outcome in uh, uh, with the workshop and hopefully uh, easy enough to implement. <laughs> And, a, and a, a request, if if there are other domain communities working on something like that, we would be ecstatic to connect and promote that work. We, we certainly as journals, I mean, at least from AGU's point of view, we don't want to say what those requirements, what those standards are. We'd rather point to the community uh, practice. May I add something? Uh, the, the point of my question was actually, uh, I, I think that those communities and sub communities are actually perhaps represented by the editors of your journals. So you could actually ask them uh, whether they had guidance on that to repositories. So yes, so that's why not all those guidance documents are finished yet. Chris is actually meeting with the editors individually and working through all of that. Um, and it's that's probably been, and I, I forgive me as I'm, I'm talking for Chris here, um, uh, that's probably been the most valuable piece of this is that engagement and you know being able to provide those connections directly. Um, and interestingly, um, there is quite a, for many of our editors, there's there's uh, just talking about repositories is kind of a new thing. Um, being able to recommend them is a, a new concept. And they once they start to say, oh yeah, okay, I did know about that, but I just didn't realize that was valuable here. Um, connecting those dots so that they feel more confident um, has been just incredibly valuable. Chris, Chris you, you got a comment back from some of the editors on the, the guidance that was complete. Can you, can you help everyone understand the difference between our journals that don't have their guidance yet and the ones that do? Yeah, I, I mentioned that um, we, we got more specific questions. Uh, so we, we actually get them early on too, um, earlier on in the process. And uh, um, I did want to back up and say, like, I have an example of planets, um, uh, you know, our journal of planets that has, um, has, uh, we finished through, we did actually go back and forth a great deal about the recommendations, um, you know, with repositories and, uh, you know, also specifically about guidance about uh, software citation. And uh, so we had quite a bit of um, back and forth. And in fact, some of those conversations ended up helping repositories improve um, their guidance and workflows. And um, we also, you know, we really wanted to work through some of the recommendations to see that they, you know, they, they really followed through on some of the, the um, you know, the, the, the best practices that we were hoping for, um, you know, the, the, the FAIR related princ principles that we're looking for. And, and the editor in chief there was 
particularly interested in, you know, the fair principles and wanted to ensure that, you know, that, that the repositories were, um, you know, applying these things and that we were providing the, you know, the best guidance. So, um, yeah, Planets is a good example. Yeah. And, and in, in general, we're seeing less questions coming from authors where the guidance is complete. Um, and this is really giving us a lot of hope. The frustration here is we decided to start in a really simple format, um, which is not fair. So please, please don't laugh too hard at us, <laughs> um, but very quickly to move towards something that is much easier for the community to um, participate in and be more open and transparent and searchable, findable, and we'll, we'll get those DOIs assigned. So, so the humor is not lost on me that, that we pick PDFs to start with. <laughs> That, that was me. I did that. That was my fault. Um, okay, great. Um, it, let's see there. Brooks, um, can you talk about uh, this new initiative around notebooks? Sure. Uh, thanks, Shelley. Thanks, everybody. Um, so this actually, uh, again, Peter Fox is one of the um, instigators, initiators, uh, I guess I can call Peter an uh, instigator um, for this and and wanted to push uh, data publishing or publishing through notebooks through Earth and Space Science. And we actually have a couple of papers in progress that are uh, based on that. Um, separately, we are also looking at it. Uh, we implemented including them as a supplemental type for ESOR. Um, the preprint archive, so there they can be posted there as well. So the the there's a number of challenges associated with um, this, um, including handling it through the review process, and we're not quite uh, natively handling notebooks. Um, uh, one of the other challenges is making sure um, that uh, key data and software that are included within the notebook are still deposited in appropriate domain or um, respective repositories that, you know, so at least the, the data sets and the um, software are discoverable separately from the notebook. So that's one of the challenges. And so we're developing some broad guidance there. I, I would say, I don't think we have all the final solutions yet on um, uh, either incorporating these natively or linking to the notebooks appropriately when they're publishing. We have a number of, of you know, st uh, of community standards that are going, but looking more broadly at whether there's some future uh, workflows that would allow uh, native review, both through the review process, um, so that reviewers could access the notebooks, and then in in a standard way that's easy and. I, I recognize. I think we recognize that there's some special ways that that can happen, but that. Um, reviewers can access to it in a standard way and then post publication it's available in a standard way and linked to um, or accessible uh, through the paper as well, the, the final publication. Shelley, Chris, anything you want to add on that? Uh, we're really excited. Chris has some um, uh, initial guidance um, about that we'll be adding into the author guidance um, that we plan to share with this email list with the Coptus email list once it's um, been through some internal review. Um, um, yeah, and I, I'd say we've also had a larger discussion with the, with the software citation guidance at Force 11 and other people working on that. But from the other publishers out there, if, if you all are um, either interested in some common standards on notebooks or developing um, your own guidance on notebooks, it would probably be good to chat and have, start having those conversations because there's growing interest within the community for having a standardized workflow. Yeah, and I, uh, Brooks, I, I guess I can just add that uh, with that guidance that we're developing, I think we are hitting the point where we're start, starting to invite people in to provide further, yep. you know, like review and guidance. So I think we're hitting that point now. And so I'm using, I think we're all using notebooks in the broadest binders, everything on up. So. We'll be really transparent 
um, with this email list for COPDES when it's time to take a look and you'll all have a chance to jump in and, and, and review that guidance. So I'm not gonna make a list where you can sign up because we're just gonna invite you all to, to participate anyway. Um, I was going to, but then I thought that's silly. You're all gonna be invited. Um, all right, that's coming up. Does anyone have a question for Brooks? And, and it, just so you know, it, we do, you, the exact details are going to be iterative and um, making sure this makes sense for the community um, as well. Um, alrighty. Um, so I'm next. Uh, I'm going to talk about this um, uh, uh, effort that I'm working with um, Caroline Coward from NASA JPL. Let me just see if Caroline is on here. Um, and Deb Agarwal. I don't see either of them. If they're hiding, let me know. Um, Caroline is helping us put together uh, a community of practice around data citation. This is meant to be surge efforts on really difficult problems. This is not meant to last um, beyond uh, trying to get awareness and solutions out there. Um, Deb Agarwal provided us with the first use case uh, and on April 8th, we held our first workshop. So the use case that we started with is the challenge around um, a collection, uh, many different data citations in a paper. Uh, many journals are really challenged when there's 100, 200, 300 citations. Um, that it just doesn't work within the editorial process. It's technically possible, but it's very difficult to manage. Um, and we're finding that there are a number of disciplines that have this same problem. Um, and I did hear from, um, in, um, I think Kirsten Elgar is still on, but I heard from the Copernic, oh, and Johan, Johan, Johannes is on. Um, there's some re live issues, um, not only at AGU, but at other journals like uh, EGU's journals, where they, they have hundreds of um, data citations and it's just not possible to, to manage easily. So there's mechanisms out there um, to do that. And I, I won't dive into the, the whole discussion, but just make you aware that you're welcome to participate in this um, very broad community of practice. Um, and since Rebecca's on the call, Rebecca Koskala, who's the executive director for RDA US, we're not using the term community of practice in the same way that RDA is using it. But we are connecting to RDA to help that help use that community as a uh, reviewer for the recommendations. So um, I did talk to Hillary Hanahoe about doing that. This topic crosses multiple working groups. Um, so the intention is to reach out to those working groups and ask them to review these recommendations um, uh, and also stand up a, a home working group for the work. So it's a, it's a little odd. Um, we're not standing up a brand new effort. We're trying to pull together existing working groups at RDA that are already working on these problems. So dynamic data citations, data granularity, um, you name it. Uh, pr probably even the journal guidance would make sense, the journal policy guidance um, for reviewing. Uh, so there's a front end piece and a back end piece. Uh, and I welcome you to take a look at the recording um, and we will have a follow-up session. Uh, Caroline is organizing that right now with Deb um, and hopefully within two or three sessions, we'll have a way forward for dealing with these large number of citations. Um, if you would like your use case to be the next one, uh, please reach out. Uh, we don't have the next one identified yet, but we are getting ideas in as to what that would be. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, if, if you have a brilliant idea, send an email. Don't, don't hold your brilliant idea to yourself, okay? <laughs> um, all right, great, let's move on. Um, Rebecca, do you mind talking a little bit about the Core Trust Seal cohort? Not at all, no, thanks for the opportunity. So last week during the RDA plenary, Shelley happened to mention this in a talk, and there was quite a bit of interest. And it just reminded me that we still have room in the Core Trust Seal cohort. And I wanted to make sure that you knew that um, the repository does not have to be in the US. It can be any, it's global. So if you know of any repositories that are thinking about doing the Core Trust Seal 
a certification. This is a great opportunity to join the cohort and let me know and I will get back to them. That's a short, short one, but. And um, let people in your networks know too. So, so this is coming out of the Enabling Fair Data Project where the um, initial uh, fee for Quartra SEAL certification is covered by the project. That has a timeline. Um, it ends early next year. Um, we'll try to get it extended, but no guarantees. But even if you, uh, even if there's um, more repositories than we have funding for, there's plenty of funding right now, um, you could still benefit from the reduced cost of the cohort uh, having been established. So everyone's welcome to tell, tell your repository friends. Um, okay. Oh, thank Kirsten, thank you, great. I see another example. Um, okay. Does anyone else have an effort that's going on that they wanna talk about? We have some time. Does anyone want less time on Zoom and would prefer to do this face-to-face? -face? Yes, great. All your hands are up, I see that. <laughs> okay, I hope you're laughing. <laughs> Thanks, Yannis. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Okay, now you're working with me. Thank you very much. Great. All right, let's move on. Um, so now we're coming into the last 20 minutes and we are way ahead of schedule. So if anyone wants to add any items, you're welcome to do so. Um, there is uh, a request. If you have ideas for workshops that could be hosted by Copdes, um, uh, uh, oh, Mark, Marcus, did, um, I think there was someone who was gonna help you check your work. Did, did that connection not work out? Um, I'm trying to go all the way down to type literal inside of my data, not just inside the citation part, because the citation part is kind of the easy part. But in order to get uh, the actual data sets queryable, yeah, I'm uncomfortable with saying, yes, this is a thing, this is this works. This, can you... It, you and I have talked previously, so so that's why you're not giving all the information. Yeah. Would you would you kindly put in uh, into the chat the type of data, um, the kind of thing you're looking for, and this community um, might very well have a really great recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a minute right. to do that. So. And 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 Marcus has been a really fantastic guinea pig for implementing fair within his. Um, uh, master's thesis, right? Isn't that? Yes. And it, I don't think it's worth a master's thesis because it's been like, yeah, there's, since a lot of uh, information is, or the ways to implement stuff is two years, around two years old. Because uh, a lot of the, a lot of it that I'm trying to use has been from uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium. So I've got that part down. And then I'm trying to add the properties that go under all the open geospatial stuff. Okay. And I'm trying to put it into a JSON LD format, uh, but I'm thinking I just, oh, and I'm trying to make it so it can be done on a Chromebook so that anybody can do it as long as can, they have- Do you mind typing? So. Do you mind typing all that? Okay, all right. Okay, uh, thank you so in much. in the uh, document or in the- uh, um, it can, Yes, you can put it in the document and okay. we can direct everybody to take a look at your case in the document. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Super. All right. Uh, the, Marcus is just the perfect example of uh, how, you know, how we need to better ways we can help our community. And he's got some really fantastic questions and, and we're, we're delighted to give him a hand. Um, all right. So new ideas for workshops. Um, and uh, so please, please add those. Um, and then the second item there, we, um, you all know that this email list we've got for Coptus has been a little bit of a shoestring. Um, ESIP has a fantastic uh, platform and we, we will go ahead and put 
uh, the email list into their platform where you can actually manage your email from there. You, you, for instance, if you're tired of getting my emails, you can help. Um, other people can use the list to email. Um, and then you can, of course, uh, uh, make it uh, awareness uh, to for others to join. And when that happens, you will get a prompt telling you that that's just happened. And I just wanted you all to know that. And I'll send out an email. I know the humor of this is not lost on me. I'll send an email about the email change uh, prior to the email changing. Okay, great. Um, then we are also in the process of updating the Coptis website. Um, some of the pages have been removed. Uh, and uh, hopefully a little bit more helpful, including the link to add yourself to said email list. Um, but if you're already getting emails, don't worry, you'll automatically be added. Um, and then uh, the intention is for us to establish um, monthly meetings for Coptus, and that's in the works at the moment. Let's see. Um, Great, I'm seeing questions. Uh, okay, we just got to the end of our agenda. Does anybody have anything else? Does anybody? Okay. Last call and we're gonna go ahead and end the meeting and you can all have your time back. Kelly, I, I don't know if there's just uh, one or two minutes if this is relevant too, but um, we're getting quite a lot of interest in that um, uh, GoFair US data stewardship interest group. Um, so we have people from like NASA, DOE, and you know uh, other places like CDC, NIH, um, and so I'm going to drop the form uh, link in here if anyone's interested, but it seems to, to be mounting um, the interest. <laughs> so if anyone's interested in joining that uh, first uh, group, and it was launched by the Oak Ridge uh, National Lab. So, so uh, anyways, if anyone's interested. Do, do you want to share some of the background on that? Yeah. Uh, so it, it sort of had a grassroots movement. Um, in the Go, GoFair US, um, there were, um, again, Oak Ridge was, um, it, you know, the, the people there were interested in um, talking about data stewardship more from like this, what we're talking about, discipline specific, you know, these really advanced cases that we're seeing and um, really wanted to talk about FAIR on that level. And, uh, and you know, they, they were looking across Europe, uh, to Europe, because there's also an interest group for um, fair data stewards and looking at the work there and, and, and sort of starting up, you know, sort of a similar initiative, but really again, trying to dig into fair um, at, you know, at this, uh, you know, discipline level. And uh, so that that's where, and I think that that's, you know, this is the result of some of that, those sort of grassroots conversations. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this is sort of the initial meeting to see if, um, to stand up um, a stewards group as well for um, people to help each other. And, uh, you know, I think other things we've talked about as, as far as like elevating the, the position of stewardship, uh, you know, job descriptions and, uh, um, you know, providing um, sort of these, these um, webinars and, and discipline specific guidance. Um, so I think that, that, that seems to be where people um, want to head. And, in fact, it's not just for the U.S. Like we actually have people from all over the place that are also signing up. Um, so, um, anyways, if uh, if anyone's interested, uh, I've just been surprised to see the numbers grow <laughs> and who's been involved. So that's good. That's good to know. Um, if anyone else has something to share, you're really welcome to do it. Um, and we've had a couple questions on this recording. I will go ahead and post it on the Coptus website. Uh, there's a new tab called events that has this meeting and then the one coming up for East of Summer. Um, so I'll put it there and then um, push it out in our email list um, as well. So, so it'll take me about, I don't know, 24 hours, maybe less to, to get it up there. There is um, 
if you're all hanging here for a minute more, there is an interesting project that AGU is supporting along with eight other societies on um, a data sharing seminar series, series for societies. Uh, and that is all being hosted on a really fun new website called We Share Data. Um, isn't that a, a great name? Um, uh, and you're, you're welcome to uh, 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 participate in that. You're welcome to come to those sessions. They're meant to be fairly high level topics for uh, leadership within societies and society staff to uh, across all of the disciplines to uh, uh, get a better, get their arms around challenges have, uh, with, with talking about and recommending and supporting their members for sharing data. Um, so the topics are at that level. Um, the next one, actually Danny Kincaid is gonna be one of our speakers at the next one along with Michelle Heacock from the NIEHS. Um, and they're gonna be talking about um, uh, making uh, Data, data products that are easier for researchers to use. So essentially addressing interoperability and well-documented um, uh, data. And I'm really excited about that one because that goes directly to the value of investing in data management for researchers. Um, and that's pretty exciting. Um, and everything's recorded um, and there's a DOI on everything too. <laughs> Um, anybody else? Just Shelly, this just um, thanks to everybody for coming. Uh, there's a lot more happening, um, including as Shelly mentioned that, and even um, other relevant EGU sessions. Uh, Kirsten mentioned one, and Shelly and uh, Kristen are running, and others are um, running a couple tomorrow. So look forward to seeing you throughout the week. Um, and uh, as, as Shelly mentioned, uh, upgrades coming to the website, please check in there, particularly with that we have your email address, right? Or um, that we're trying to update that list and we'll be having um, other seminar, regular COPTA seminars going forward, including on um, some other things that are actively being worked on like um, ensuring data citations and, and completing that workflow that are particularly interested at the publisher end as well as aspects that are particularly interested at the repository end. So looking forward to staying in touch with everyone. All right, thanks Brooks. If that's it, have a really great day and enjoy the rest of EGU. <laughs>